Get ready to duke it out. I'm the Flannel Fox, Tim Swernick, and I review Duke of Defense on the Nintendo Switch. If you like this video, please subscribe, follow me on Twitter at the Flannel Fox, and check out Gaming Today with Flannel Fox on your favorite podcast app. Duke of Defense is an action-based tower defense game where you play as the new Duke defending multiple villages from a trio of evil wizards. With Mario 3 style overworld maps, you select levels in each respective world and jump into action. In Duke of Defense, your goal in each level is to defend that level's castle from multiple waves of medieval enemies, which you do by constructing towers to fend them off, some specialized to attack ground troops, others air, some throwing huge bombs, and others dealing poison damage, which you need money in order to construct, and you're given a certain amount of gold at the beginning of each level, but you earn more from defeating enemies and surviving waves, allowing you to build up your defenses until you've made it impenetrable. Before jumping into Duke of Defense, I really wasn't sure what to expect and wouldn't have called myself a fan of tower defense games, but the basic gameplay loop in DoD is really satisfying. Along with building your different kinds of towers, you have a sword to pick off those stragglers that get past your defenses, and a dodge roll to move carefully between them and dodge falling debris. You can also dodge roll through enemies, which you'll want to do because if you run into them, you'll drop your coins everywhere and be scrambling to pick them up. After your towers are built, they can be upgraded by standing on a specific tower and waiting for the timer to reach the next checkpoint, which allows you to upgrade that tower strength, fire range, or just area range, depending on the type of tower that it is. So this creates a carefully balanced dance of figuring out where your weaknesses are, dodge rolling through enemies to build a new tower, then upgrading, quickly grabbing coins from fallen foes along the way before they disappear, then moving to another tower to upgrade, and so on and so forth until you've completed that level. It really keeps you busy throughout the full waves, plate spinning your way to victory. As you progress through DoD, you'll unlock new wearable hats, skill points, and tower types. The heads are purely aesthetic, but add so much to the experience. With a great variety of character heads from other well-known indie titles and cultural references, it's a fun little mix-up that really adds to the game's personality and charm. The skill points unlock skills from three different trees, building, movement, and attack, which do a lot to enhance your gameplay styles like giving you one coin per tower built every 10 seconds in game, or simple things like, you know, increasing your sword attack time. However, you're given enough coins to unlock all of the skills, which takes away from the consequence of choice, which perhaps I'm thinking a little too deeply into this as this is a good time game that will not challenge you to the extreme, but overall creates a fun and fast paced progression. As you progress through the levels, you'll unlock different types of towers that naturally unlock at the same rate for everyone, giving you fire towers to fight ice enemies and other elemental treats. However, I found during my play that the base towers you earn earlier on were most often my best bet. And while it was fun to experiment with the newer, more costly towers, it rarely returns the investment in your defenses. While the level to level gameplay is a damn good time, I really did not enjoy the boss fights. Not utilizing the same tower building strategies that you've been developing throughout the entire game, they're mostly dodge roll spam fests where you're surviving multiple waves of projectiles to earn money until you're able to attack. Eventually I dreaded these sections, but fortunately once you figure out the little routine, you can get through them easily. Not that this is a bad thing, but something to take into account is that this is a very short experience to play through. I finished it in under three hours and wasn't rushing by any means, and you cannot skip the dialogue, which is witty, but the story wasn't engaging enough to write home about. While I wasn't a fan of the lackluster boss fights, when in the thick of an enemy-ridden battlefield, building, upgrading, and cutting down that persistent foe, Duke of Defense is a great time. While I do wish this game was about twice as long, what is here is solid. That's why I'm giving Duke of Defense on the Nintendo Switch a 7.5 out of 10. If you enjoyed this video game review, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, The Flannel Fox, hit that like button, and follow me on Twitter at The Flannel Fox. Be sure to follow and subscribe because the more followers and subscribers I get, the more codes I get, which means I make more videos. 
Thanks to HitSense for providing me with this review copy. Thanks for watching my videos, and as always, see ya next time, Switcher.